Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Dr. Sam Monroe and in today's video, I'm going to talk about why so many women leave academia, an issue also known as the pipeline problem. everyone, welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Sam Monroe and I am an ecologist. That means I study plants and animals and how they interact with their environment. I have studied all sorts of wildlife, everything from sharks to shrimps to shrubs. And here on YouTube, I make videos about ecology in the media, what it's like to be a scientist and how to build a career in STEM. If you're not an academic or even if you are, academia can seem like a strange, confusing, closed off world with weird rules that you need to learn in order to survive. Do you or someone you love have a career as an academic? Are you constantly asking yourself, what on earth are they talking about? And what is going on here? Well, fear not, because in a video series that I'm calling Academy, huh? I am going to break down and explain the ins and outs of what it's like to work in academia. In this video, I am going to explain a really serious problem we have at universities all around the world. That is the continued loss of women from academia and the lack of women in senior academic positions. This is an issue commonly referred to as the pipeline problem. I want you to imagine a series of pipes all connected making one big long pipeline. The pipeline represents the academic research career path and the water being funneled through that pipe is the academics. Academics start the pipe as a junior researcher and hopefully make it all the way to the end where they get to become a full professor. At the end of this pipeline, you will find job security and a great salary. But women who tend to face a lot of barriers to career progression in academia tend to drip out of the cracks of this pipeline. They leak out at all of the junctures in the pipeline, if you will. So by the time we get to the end of the pipeline, we find that there are very few women in senior academic positions. Although this problem absolutely can be found in all areas of academia, including the arts and humanities, it is a particularly big problem in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and math. For example, in 2016 in Australia, the number of men and women who held junior academic positions at universities, known as level A positions or postdoctoral fellowships, was about the same. But by the time people reach level D and E positions, these are the full professor positions in Australia, only 15% of these positions were held by women. In the European Union, it is the exact same story. In 2017, the EU reported that women made up roughly 48% of their PhD graduates, but only represented one third of their researchers and 24% of their senior academic faculty. This pattern is without question a global problem. In 2018, the UNESCO Institute for Statistics reported that of the world's scientific researchers, less than 30% are women. And keep in mind, these numbers are way worse if you are a woman of color. In the United States, women make up roughly 25 to 30% of senior academic faculty. Women of color, which includes black women, Latinas and Hispanic and indigenous women, make up just 3% of higher academic positions in STEM. Combined. Also, I guess I'm black and they do not like black ladies down there. Now, to be clear, people leave academia for all sorts of really good reasons. The fact that people leave academia or that women leave academia isn't the problem. The problem is that women are disproportionately leaving academia and losing out on academic jobs compared to men. The question is, why? I could probably do a whole video on each one of the major contributing factors to this problem. But here are some of the main reasons in a nutshell. The first big problem that women in academia face is negative gender stereotypes. STEM careers are often seen as masculine. So parents and teachers usually underestimate girls' abilities to have jobs in math or engineering. If you grow up being told that you are not good at something by the people that you trust and love the most, you're probably going to believe them. And the bias against girls in STEM can start as early as preschool. The STEM Equity Monitor in Australia surveys teachers and parents' views on girls in STEM. They found that both parents and teachers believed that jobs like computing and IT were better suited to men and were far less likely to recommend jobs as engineers to girls than to boys. This brings us to problem number two. Girls, 
particularly women of color, have far fewer role models in STEM careers to help encourage their interest. You can't be what you can't see. The third big issue is that because academia is heavily male-dominated, it tends to be quite exclusionary and is not a supportive or flexible workplace that is attractive to women. For example, you may not know this, but uh, women have babies. And sometimes they need to take time off to, you know, go have their babies. Unfortunately, many universities still don't offer adequate parental leave or flexible working arrangements. They also fail to fairly account for gaps in women's careers when they do take time off for parental leave. As a result, women often get overlooked for promotion and some just decide to leave academia altogether because it is really hard to be a good parent and a good academic. Annabelle Crabb, an author and reporter for the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, puts it best. Women have changed the way that they live their lives hugely in the last half a century. What they haven't done is move out of their domestic roles, essentially. I mean, everybody knows um, families where that's not the case, right? Um, but the big patterns are undeniable. Women moved into the workforce and just took on that extra work in addition to the domestic workload. And I think for working women, the problem is that you feel sometimes that you have to do your job as if you don't have a family, but then also be a mother like you don't have a job. Another reason women may not be selected for positions or promotion is because of biased hiring practices and frankly, exclusionary and outright hostile working environments. A study in the United States found that male faculty in biology related fields tended to hire fewer female researchers than female faculty. We also know that women tend to rank lower on identical job applications compared to those submitted under a male name. And this doesn't even begin to cover other problems like microaggressions, harassment, and assault. And of course, women of color face an entirely unique set of stereotypes that white women don't have to endure, like the view that they are angry or unstable. Add all this up and you can see that the lack of women in senior academic positions is not an accident. It is the result of bias and discrimination that starts as early as kindergarten all the way up to adulthood. So how do we fix this? Well, it's not going to be easy. All of the research that we have tells us that gender bias in academia and STEM is entrenched in the system. But the first thing that we need to do is recognize our own bias. Everyone has them, and it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. Biases are a product of growing up in a world that is filled with stereotypes. But our hidden or unconscious bias can really impact all of our decisions and interactions. But we can't change these biases until we recognize them. One way you can learn about your own bias is by taking an unconscious bias test. The Harvard Implicit Association Test is considered a really effective online tool to gain a greater awareness about your biases based on gender, race, and other social groups. The link is in the description below. I took the test and I have to say the results are pretty confronting. But once you discover your bias, you can take steps to understand why you have these stereotypes and what you can do to change them. The next important thing that we can do to make change is to be an advocate. If you see gender bias or frankly, any other kind of bias in the workplace, call it out. You don't have to be rude or aggressive. People may not even realize what they're saying and doing is offensive. But just by letting them know that what they're doing is not okay may have a big impact on their future behavior. Remember that women and minorities may not always feel safe or comfortable calling out biases or any behavior that offends them. So being an active ally in this space can really help them feel safer and go a long way to making a difference. We also need to see more family-friendly policies in the university sector. There is a mountain of research that now shows that flexible working arrangements and fair evaluations for people who take time off for childcare leads to greater retention of women in the workplace. We also need to ensure that there are fairer and more transparent processes for hiring and promotion. Double-blind applications, where reviewers of job applications and grants don't know the gender of the person applying, has led to an increase in the number of successful female applicants. NASA already uses this strategy to reduce unconscious bias when allocating viewing time for the agency's telescopes. It can work, and we should do it more. And finally, 
Diversity targets for universities are critical. People tend to hire people who look and act just like them. This is why we have to start putting programs in place that proactively hire women and people of color into senior academic positions. And this is already happening. In Canada in 2017, the government announced that universities would actually lose funding unless they started hiring a more diverse set of candidates into senior research roles. Ultimately, these types of actions force people to overcome their bias and think differently about their hiring practices. All right, there you have it. The pipeline problem in academia explained, and also one of my very first YouTube videos. I think I chose a really nice, simple, non-controversial topic. Definitely not gonna be anybody angry in the comments. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell to be notified about my next video where I try and explain the crazy world of academia.